Hypothesis testing is part of statistical inference, the process of making judgments about a larger group or a population based on a smaller group actually observed such as a sample. The concepts and tools of hypothesis testing provide an objective means to gauge whether the available evidence supports the hypothesis or rejects it. Hypothesis testing can be broken down into seven steps. In step one, we start the process by stating the hypothesis. A hypothesis is a premise or a claim that we want to test or investigate. For example, we can test the claims made by a portfolio manager that her portfolio generates higher return than S&P 500 index. Or we can test if mutual fund A generates higher returns than mutual fund B. Once we state our research questions, in the first step we come up with two hypotheses, the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis. The null hypothesis is the claim to be tested. This is the default or generally accepted value of a parameter. For example, it is generally accepted that no portfolio can beat the market portfolio or S&P 500 index. So if you want to test the claim of a portfolio manager that her portfolio generates higher return than S&P 500 returns, we can formulate the following null hypothesis. Mu portfolio equals to mu S&P 500. Null hypothesis is denoted by H with zero as subscript. In our example, to reflect the widely accepted viewpoint that no portfolio can beat the market, we state the null hypothesis as the mean annual return on portfolio is equal to the mean annual return on the S&P 500 index. The null hypothesis is considered true unless the sample we use to conduct the hypothesis test gives convincing evidence that the null hypothesis is false. When such evidence is present, we are led to the alternative hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis is the hypothesis accepted when the null hypothesis is rejected. So in our example, the alternate hypothesis is that the mean return on the portfolio is greater than the mean return on S&P 500 index. Alternative hypothesis is denoted by H with a subscript of A. And we can write our alternate hypothesis as mu portfolio greater than mu S&P 500. We can formulate the null and alternative hypothesis in following three ways. The first formulation is a two-sided hypothesis test or a two-tailed hypothesis test. We reject the null in favor of the alternative if the evidence indicates that the population parameter is either smaller or larger than theta zero. In contrast, formulations two and three are each a one-sided hypothesis test or a one-tailed hypothesis test. For formulations two and three, we reject the null only if the evidence indicates that the population parameter is respectively greater than or less than theta zero. Notice that in each case above, we state the null and alternative hypotheses such that together they account for all possible values of the parameter. The next step in hypothesis testing is identifying the appropriate test statistic. The focal point of our statistical decision is the value of the test statistic. Frequently, and uh, in all the cases that we'll examine in this course, the test statistic has the following form. Test statistic equals to the sample statistic minus the value of parameter under the null hypothesis divided by the stand error of the sample statistic. The third step in the hypothesis testing is specifying the significance level. When the test statistic has been calculated, two actions are possible. We reject the null hypothesis or we do not reject the null hypothesis. The action we take is based on comparing the calculated test statistic to a specified possible value. The comparison value we choose is based on the level of significance selected. The level of significance reflects how much sample evidence we require to reject the null. There are four possible outcomes when we test the null hypothesis. First, we reject the false null hypothesis. This is the correct decision. Second, we reject a true null hypothesis. In this case, we should not be rejecting the null hypothesis, but our test statistic suggests rejection of the null. This is called a type 1 error. Third, we do not reject a false null hypothesis. In this case, we should be rejecting the null hypothesis, but our test statistic suggests accepting the null. This is a type 2 error. Finally, we do not reject a true null hypothesis. This is a correct decision. The fourth step in hypothesis testing is stating the decision rule. When we test the null hypothesis, if we find that the calculated value of the test statistic is as extreme or more extreme than a given value determined by the specified level of significance or alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. We say that the result is statistically significant. 
Otherwise, we do not reject the null hypothesis and we say that the result is not statistically significant. The value with which we compare the calculated test statistic to make our decision are rejection points or critical values for the test. The fifth step in hypothesis testing is collecting the data and calculating the test statistic. The quality of our conclusions depend not only on the appropriateness of the statistical model, but also on the quality of the data we use in conducting the test. We first need to check for measurement errors in the recorded data. Some issues to be aware of include sample selection bias and time period bias. Sample selection bias refers to the bias introduced by systematically excluding some members of the population according to a particular attribute. One type of sample selection bias is survivorship bias. For example, if we define our sample as US bond mutual funds currently operating and we collect returns for just these funds, we will systematically exclude funds that have not survived to the present date. Non-surviving funds are likely to have underperformed surviving funds. As a result, the performance reflected in the sample may be biased upward. Time period bias refers to the possibility that when we use a time series sample, our statistical conclusion may be sensitive to the starting or the ending date of the sample. The sixth step in hypothesis testing is making statistical decision. If calculated test statistic from step 5 is larger than the rejection point from step 4, we reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. The first six steps are statistical steps. The final decision concerns our use of the statistical decision. The seventh and the final step in hypothesis testing is making the economic or investment decision. The economic or investment decision takes into consideration not only the statistical decision, but also all pertinent economic issues. For example, if we find that the return on particular portfolio is statistically higher than the return on S&P 500 index by, let's say, 0.1 basis points. Well, that's good, but is the return significant enough to cover additional transactions cost? Hence, in this last step, we perform qualitative evaluations of our statistical findings. That's all for this video. In the next video, we'll discuss about the various test statistics.